Happy 13th birthday, jewellery maker. Happy birthday! <laughs> Happy 13th birthday, jewellery maker. I can't wait uh, to share the celebrations and some cake with you guys. Tune in for the epic deals that we've got in store for you. Uh, and happy birthday once again. Hi, my name's Susie Mellon and I just want to wish Jewelry Maker a very happy 13th birthday. Mwah. Hello everyone, it's Mark here. I hope you all had an amazing weekend. Uh, very wet in my neck of the woods, but it's always sun shining in the Jewelry Maker studio. And I'm delighted to be bringing to you today the next instalment in the Jewelry Maker 13 Days of Jewelry Making calendar. My last little demonstration video was back on the 4th, the actual birthday day, and today it's the 9th. So first of all, we're going to check and check along together what we've got in box number nine. So we're going to open all these doors. So we've got lots of empty boxes. So where's number nine? There we go, bottom row. So number nine, here we go. So I'm going to take the whole drawer out. I'm going to show what we've got. Now, I know, I, obviously, I know what we've got. I've been working on this, and it's very, very, very beautiful. So you get, you get a little Gruganza bag, and inside, now you can already, already tell that there is an anti-tarnish tag, so we know it's going to be something rather special. So inside box number nine, it is an incredibly elegant and beautiful bracelet. Look at this. It's very fine, very delicate. And you can see we've got these beautiful little links, these delicate little jump rings in between holding it all together. And the way it drapes, the way it moves, the way it manipulates over your finger and your wrist, this is absolutely exquisite. Sterling silver throughout, including this beautiful little faltering clasp, and you've got the safety protector as well there, so longevity for your wearing is, is paramount. So this is your piece of jewellery for your ninth day of birthday. Perfectly durable to wear it like that, but you know us at Jewellery Maker, we always like a challenge. So what I've turned this little bracelet into, I'll bring across what I'm going to show you today, is this. So I've made these little delicate little charm bracelets. Now I've used a coated hematite as my little bead of choice. So if you're in your stash, if you want to make along with me or make along when you look back on YouTube, is you need a two to three millimeter micro faceted gemstone. Now I've used the same gemstone on every single one of my links. There's nothing stopping you alternating. You can use your rainbow colors, you can use your chakra colors but the technique will be exactly the same. Now, as you probably know, these little YouTube videos last an hour. Now, that's not going to take me an hour unless you wanted to see me make all of these individual little links. So as well as showing you this, I'm also going to give you four bonus demos, okay? Some of my favorite wire work weaves, some of my caging techniques, we're we gonna show you uh, the back to basics, rosary linking, which will happen when we do the bracelet, first of all but we're gonna have a full hour of really back to basic wire work techniques, which, which are all manageable by, if you've never made jewelry before, if you've never picked up a reel of wire before, you'll be able to make all of these little projects afterwards. So this is what we're going to start with. I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown of everything you're going to need. So we've got our bracelet. Now here are my little gemstones. So as I said, these are three millimeter microfaceted coated hematite, and these are rondelles. Um, I, I love rondelles. I always think with rondelles, you'll probably get up to a third more gemstones on your strand. So for me, it's, it's definitely a greed thing with rondelles. I absolutely love them. And as I said, I've used the whole, um, every single link on the bracelet I've used the same gemstone for. But as I said, you can, you can, uh, you can just use one, not instead of groups of three. You can, um, you can choose three colours and then put them in little groups. You can go for your red, white and blue to go with the coronation theme if you wanted to. So whatever you've got in your stash, apart with gemstone wise. Then tools, for this you're going to need round nose pliers, which you'll have in your basic toolkit, 
Really important if you can either use these from your stash or try to get hold of these. These are flush cutters. And the reason why I've, I've gone for flush cutters is if they've got a very, very fine closing point at the top. And because we're going to be using head pins with, with the, on the little links on the bracelet, you will need something quite sharp to get into those little nooks and crannies. We talk about featherweight head pins. Well, I'm going to use, these, these are sterling silver featherweight head pins. These are the long, these are 50 millimeters. You don't need 50 millimeters for these tiny little links. You probably get away with 30, 35, because we're only going to be, we're going to be doing one wrapped coil. If you wanted, instead of having one bead to each of your little drops, you, you have three or four, then you may need the longer featherweight head pins as I've got here. And we, we, we could do these in sterling silver if you wanted to keep with a the sterling silver theme or base metal as well. And that's about all we're going to need. So I'll talk about the wire gauges when we come to do the bonus demonstrations later, but I, I, but I don't want to confuse things, so we'll just stick with the basics to do the bracelet first. So the first thing that I did with the bracelet was I opened it out. And as we've just mentioned in the introduction, we've got a beautiful bolt ring clasp and we've got this little safety protector as well. And this, this again, this just shows you that the, uh, the attention to detail. So obviously opening and closing constantly will, will produce some wear and tear on your little finding links here. So they've just popped this little safety mechanism in here. So the rubbing will take place in the little finding rather than on the link and the jump ring. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open, going to open the jump ring and we're going to lay it out. So this is a seven, 70, uh, sorry, a seven centimeter bracelet, seven inch bracelet. And it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 sections. Now this section, section 15 here, I didn't put any beads on because obviously that's the loop that you will attach to your bolt ring at the end. I didn't do the first link because it was going to be attached to the safety. So you basically want 13 of your links that we're going to, we're going to bead onto. So it's three 13s, 39. So you need at least 39, 40 of your beads if you're going to put groups of three on each of your loops. So these are my featherweight head pins. And as I, as I mentioned earlier, these are the longer so first thing we're going to do, we're just going to straighten those out. As you can see, they're going to take quite a few beads and quite a few wraps as well. So, so these, these are absolutely perfect. As I said, if you don't have the longer ones, because we're only going to be wrapping one of your beads at a time, the shorter ones, the sterling silver ones will be absolutely fine. Okay, so we're just going to straighten some of those out. Okay, so we've got our so these are our coated hematite. Now if you find that in your stash you have any, any strand that has a tassel, we call them gems of distinction strands, the, met the thread that goes through your temporary strand is made out of tiger tail, which is a metal coated. So if you can, try not to use your scissors, your beading scissors on that because it will blunt them. So whether you use your wire cutters from your toolkit or again, you've got your flush cutter pliers. To, to cut through. So as you, as you can see, it's, it's, it's made up of it's metal, it's a wire. So make sure you don't use your scissors. So just going to pop out some of our gemstones. Now you can either do one bead at a time, or what I like to do, I like to get them, they do them all and then do them all at the same time. So all we're going to do first of all, if you wanted to, you could put little sterling silver spacers either side of your hematite if you wanted to add in again another little bit of detail. So all we're going to do is we're just going to thread them on. Now sometimes you'll find that because featherweight head pins, they do have really delicate little heads on the end. So you may find that some of your gemstones, especially something like hematite, which has larger drill holes, it may pop through. So if that's the case, either discard the bead and use it for another project, or sometimes the, the little heads on the head pins are complete, or some of them are different sizes. So just be aware of that. So all we're going to do is just going to place some beads on our head pins. I love these, they are very blingy, they are very sparkly, and I think that's just what you need on a bracelet like this. So that's three, so four. So again, they do go on very easily. And this is, this is why I love featherweight head pins, specifically for your gems of distinction strands, your tassel strands as we call them, because they do tend to have very delicate, fine drill holes. Okay, so there's, we've, we've got six there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, you need to decide whether you're going to put a bead 
on a link, then repeat the process or you're going to choose a link and you're going to put your three on. So what I did is I started from one end. Remember, we're not going to place anything on the first, on the first jump ring. We're going to start on the first link after that. So there are 13 altogether. So what I did, I did the groups of three at a time and then moved on. So we're going to pop them into groups of three. So we'll do a couple of groups of three and that'll give you the idea. And then we'll move on to our bonus demonstrations. So first thing we're going to do is I'm right-handed, so I hold the item in my left and I'm going to place my pliers just above the stone, leaving probably two millimetres of gap, just enough to make a coil. And I'm going to take the long tail and I'm going to fold it towards me. And I'm going to then go underneath. And you can either go to the left of the bead or you can go to the right. I've always gone to the left, so I'm going to follow that direction and just straighten out my tail. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my bracelet and I'm going to just manipulate it so you can see that little, you can see the ring in between the two little sections. And I'm going to bring the tail of the head pin up. I'm going to pull the bracelet and as you can see quite easily, that little loop has popped into the jump ring inside. So that's nicely attached. And then we're going back to our round nose pliers and we've got our little loop and can you see where the wires cross? I'm going to place my pliers. We'll talk about this more in detail when we come to do the next few demonstrations. I'm going to give you a, a back to basics rosary linking of which this is half a link because we're not making the other half. The other half is the head of the head pin. So can you see where the wires cross? I'm going to place my round nose, the tip of the round nose pliers to the right of the cross. So it's to the right of the cross, which means it's covering half of that little loop we've just made. And then all I'm going to do is going to wrap around the bead two or three times and then pull with the tail uppermost and I'm going to go in with my flush cutters and this is why it's really important to have flush cutters because we're going to go right in and we're going to cut the wire so you can hear the wire cut nicely so that's our first little charm attached okay and as I said I'm going to put groups of three in all of the of the little loops. So I'm going to pick up bead number two. I'm going to repeat. So I'm going to place my pliers, leaving a couple of millimetres between your pliers and the bead. Bring the tail towards me all the way over, veer off to the left. Straighten out your tail. Now because we've already added one of our little beads, our little charms, there's slightly less room in the jump ring so what you need to do, you need to manipulate it. So what I, what I tend to do is, is pull it nice and taut, hold the charm and the remainder of the bracelet in my hand, and then just keep that jump ring nice and open so that I can come through from the back, slide it down, and then that will sit inside that loop. We've just, we're just going to manipulate it so it falls into the loop like so. So this is our second. So again, we're going to go in with our pliers to the right of the cross, and then we're going to do our little loops. Now, normally when we're, when we're suggesting doing coils like this, we recommend using your flat nose pliers, but the reason I'm using the round nose is because it's so delicate, the bracelet, that the flat nose pliers would A, would cover the loop, so you wouldn't have any space to actually do your wrapping. And, and I think it, would, it could damage the sterling silver as well. So I think round those pliers are the way to go. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to snip the tail. Okay, so I've got, again, that's my two little links. And then we're just going to do our third. So exactly the same. So we're going to pick up. We're going to place our round nose pliers in, again, leaving a couple of millimetres. Bring the tail towards us all the way around. Make sure it's nice and secure. And then we're going to, again, so pull the brace this nice and taut. And then we're just going to manipulate it so we can find the loop. is just there, there we go. 
I'm going to take my tail, feed it through the loop, slide it down, there's our loop, pop our pliers in to the right of the cross, and we're going to do our little wrapped loop. And we're going to go in, cut our tail, and there we have our first group of three little charms. Now, if you can notice, we've got, if I show, if I could try and place this on my finger, you can see that we've got two sides of the loop. We've got the side nearest to me, and we've got the side further away from me. So if you can, just that little attention to detail, try and attach your three charms to one side. And that means when it comes onto the wrist, instead of having two dangling downwards, one uppermost and proud, they'll all try and sit on the same side. So we'll just do one more of our little sections. Let's go a bit further up into the middle. It's exactly the same. So it's quite a nice therapeutic little make this. And obviously we've embellished the bracelet for the demonstration, but it is so beautiful. It's, it's well worth keeping, keeping it on its own as it is. Okay, so we've got our little loop. So I'm going to bring the head pin up slide it down into the loop. We're going to go into the right of our cross and then we're going to just do a couple of wraps, two or three wraps. There we go. Straighten out our tail. We're going to go in and snip. So that's our first one. So as I said, you could just leave it with one little charm if you like. But I, I prefer the groups of, groups of three, so that's one. And then we'll do our second. So place in a couple of millimeters, bring the wire towards you, veer off to the left, pick up our bracelet, manipulate that. Let's see which side it's on. It's on that side. So I'm going to bring it across, pull tight, bring the head pin up through the loop, slide it down. So that went on a lot easier. I'm going to go in, where the wires cross, and then we're going to do our wrapping. And then we're going to go in and snip. So that's number two. And then we'll do the same with our third. So this is a nice make. So I think probably from start to finish, it'll only take you three quarters of an hour, something like that. But I think it's the enjoyment of choosing your gemstones is half the fun of this make. Just going to again pick it up, offer it up, find the little loop, and there we go. And then we're going to come up through, there we go, captured it, slide it down so it sits in the loop. Sometimes what happens is that you actually take your head pin through the loop of the gemstone as well. If that happens, you'll, you'll soon see and you, you can just reverse and go back in and do it again. So I'm going to go in to the right of the cross, do a few wraps, and then we're going to go in and cut nice and tight. And then we, so you can see how easy it is to then attach your second group. So if you wanted to, you could have a group at one end, a group in the middle, a group at the other end. But as you see, to have the whole bracelet of your little dangles and I just like the movement and especially when you're using something as sparkly as your hematite it's, it's fantastic for your movement so that's what I did with my advent calendar charm so if I show you this so all the way around we've got our three charm so it's a great fun little project that's your calendar so now, obviously with, with 40 minutes to go, I'm going to show you some, some quick little demonstrations using your gauges of wire. So we'll put everything to one side. So I'm going to introduce you firstly to the tools you're going to need for the next sections and then also the wire gauges. So you will need the following. So on my bench, I have got our round nose pliers that we've just been using. We've got our flush cutters. 
then you can either rummage through your stash of jump rings or in this, in this uh, section, I'm going to show you how to make your own. And this is using the stick six step bail making pliers. And it, the, 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 the tool is for making bales in your jewelry, but for making small amounts of jump rings, this is the perfect tool. And you can see that the six steps, we've got six different circumferences for your jump ring making, which so when we start doing the little demonstrations, we'll talk about those. And then, as I've previously mentioned, these are flat nose pliers, which you would get in your basic jewelry maker toolkit, which is available on the website. So if you want to have a little dabble in, in jewelry making for the first time. And that is pretty much all you're going to need tool wise. So wire gauges for these demonstrations you are going to need. Now I've got, I've got various golds and silvers here in different colors. So this is your one millimeter gauge. I'll explain how we're going to use this as the demos progress. Then we've got 0.8 millimeter. And again, this is in the silver. And we might even use gold in the one millimeter size. Then my favorite gauge, we shouldn't have favorite gauges, but this is my ultimate favorite gauge, specifically for rosary linking, which I'm going to show you in a second. And this is your 0.6 millimeter gauge. And then one of the techniques I'm going to show you is how to do the herringbone charm. And this uses your 0.4 millimeter wire. So you're going to need 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.8, and one millimeter. So out of the five main gauges, it's just 0.25 we won't be using today. So first of all, I'm going to show you how to do your rosary link and your rosary chain. And then we'll move on to the other three items. So as I've just mentioned, 0.6 is my favorite gauge in wire for rosary linking. If you find that when you're, if, you're, if it's a new technique you're starting, try to start with a 0.4 millimeter gauge, which is a lot finer and it's a lot easier to use. But I would definitely recommend your 0.6 millimeter because you want the wire to be part of the feature of the link, not just the bead that it's holding. So we'll just pop those to one side. And what I've done is I've rummaged through my bead stash at home and I have taken one of my favorite gemstones, the tiger's eye, and these are our colored versions. So we've got teal, we've got green, fuchsia, we've got mixed colors, we've got yellow, and the most amazing blue. So uh, the beads in here range from three millimeters right up to these beasts. These are 16 millimeter rounds, okay? So I think for the demos today, we're probably going to be using the 10 millimeter rounds as they're a really nice go-to size. So let's go for, let's go for the green, because I think that'll go really nicely against the gold. Okay, so we'll just take some of our gemstones out. And Tiger's Eye are a really good starter bead if you're starting your jewelry making hobby because it has really nice gemstone drill holes. So it's perfect for your six millimeter wire. Okay, so we'll cut our wire first of all, just a manageable length, about 10 to 12 inches, that's all we need. And first of all, we're going to just soften our wire and straighten it. Now you can get wire straightening tools, but I think if you're going to be doing this sort of work, it's, there's nothing better than actually warming the, the wire up yourself. Okay, so we've got nice straight wire. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, to do our wrapped loop at one end, which will enable us then to attach to other gemstones to do our rosary linking or, uh, or using as a charm. Now this, the beginning is exactly the same as we first did in the bracelet a moment ago. So again, I use my round nose pliers and about an inch from the top, we're going to place our pliers in. Now I've been doing rosary linking for quite a few years now and, and I pretty much know whereabouts on my pliers to hold my wire. If you want your, what your loops to be exactly the same size, what you can do is use a black permanent marker pen and just put a little mark on both sides of your pliers and then you'll know every time you offer your wire up, it'll be in exactly the same place and your loops will be the same size. So again, we've got our short tail. We're gonna bring it towards us. We're going to go off to the left and we're going to take off our pliers. Okay, so you have the right angle with the loop. Now, do you remember the loop a moment ago? That's what we made from our featherweight head pin, but this is going to be your wire. Exactly the same. So we're going to take our pliers to the right of the cross and we're going to hold inside the loop. Okay, so we're not going in the loop anymore, we're holding the loop in between the two halves of the pliers. And all we're going to do is we're just going to wrap the shorter tail three times, that's one, 
two, and three. And keeping those wires as close to each other as we can. So now you have your loop at one end and you have your coil. And this is why 0.6 millimeter is a fantastic gauge because you want the, you want the coil and the loop to be part of the feature. We're going to go in and we're going to cut our wire nice and tight. So this is a wrapped loop, okay? Then we're going to take one of our gemstones, we're going to slide it on, and we're going to place it just above the coil. So you can see now it sits nice and neatly above our coil. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our pliers and we need to leave enough space in between the gemstone and the plier that it's going to be able to replicate the space taken up by the coil that we've just added to the beginning of our gemstone. I think that's probably roughly it. And then we're going to bring the wire across, over. We're going to take it off our pliers. Exactly the same, we're going to take our pliers to the right of the cross so it sits in the loop. And then we're simply going to wrap the gap, it's called. Little technical term, wrap the gap. And you can be really tight with this so it sits nice and neatly and try not to overlap your wires. If you find that the wires do start overlapping, just reverse on yourself and then redo it again. So that seems to be, we've got the same number of coils, top and bottom, we've got the loops the same size. So we're going to go in and we're going to trim our wires nice and neatly, again using our flush cutters. And then using our flat nose pliers, we're just going to go in and just flatten that coil because we don't want any sharp edges. Now, lots of people do this different ways. I like to have my two loops facing the same direction. So these are both flat, can you see, on each other. Some design designers like to have one of the loops facing the opposite direction. So we have one on the flat and then one, can you see that they're changing directions, okay? Nothing wrong, there's not a wrong or a right way to do it, but I prefer to have my two loops on the flat. Okay, so that is a rosary link. So now I'm going to show you how to turn your link into a chain. And rosary linking is one of those techniques that's very therapeutic, it's very repetitive, and it's very relaxing. And uh, it's one of my favourite techniques, and, uh, and I have it featured on the show in a lot of my designs. So we're going to do a link this time. So that's our link, we're going to turn it into a chain. Exactly the same, pliers in, inch of wire, bring it towards us all the way over, Take it off our pliers so you have your right angle. Before we do anything else, we're going to pick up the link we've just made. We're going to slide it on so it sits in the loop. Now, this could have been the loop that featured on our bracelet a moment ago, but in fact, it's a separate piece of wire. So we're going to go in to the right of the cross. We're going to do our three wraps. Then we're going to go in and cut off that little tail. So this isn't actually very much wastage at all in rosary linking either, which is quite nice. So we've got our coil. We're going to take gemstone number two, and we're going to slide that down, straighten out our wire. So every time you straighten it, you're work hardening in it and softening it, if that makes sense. It's a very strange thing to say. You're, you're, giving, it, you're giving it suppleness, but it's also strengthening the wire as well. We're going to go in. Leave a gap to replicate the first coil. Bring the wire over, straighten, take off. Hold the cross. Then we're going to do our wrap the gap. Okay, perfect. So just check, got the same coils. Perfect, got three either side. Going to go in and then we're going to cut our wires. Okay, so that's two. So we're going to do one more now. I'm going to go in, I'm going to do my wrap, I'm going to do my link. And you're thinking, oh no, Mark, you've not dropped your bead in. This was intentional. If you do do this when you're working, you forget to do your bead, don't worry, we just do everything in reverse. So we're going to drop our tail, so that's nice and, and tight. We're going to pick up our gemstone. This has happened to me so many times where you forget to put your bead on before you finish off doing your coil, but all you do is you do it in reverse. So we've attached our bead. We're going to go in, 
leave our space, bring our tail towards you, all the way over, and now we can pick up our chain we've already made, we can drop that down, and then we can go in and continue with the loop. Okay, so don't, so don't, so don't feel anguished if you wrap your first loop without putting your bead on first, don't worry at all. So we're going to go in, and then we're going to go in and finish that nice and neatly. So all you would do then is you would just continue all the way along with your rosary link. So this is a rosary, so we've got a wrap loop, which then becomes a link, which then becomes a chain, just from adding them all together. So you, it's a, as you can see, it's, it's a really mindful technique, very simple, very repetitive. It gets your fingers nice and manipulated. It gives you some really good starting points with using your wire. And I really love it. And it's, it's one of the most popular designs in, in the world. And, and obviously, we've got the rosary chains. And uh, it's, it's just lovely, one of my all-time favorites. So this is your rosary linking. So I thought what I would show you next, okay, is I'm just going to, going to make, um, let's change the color of the gemstone. Let's work it up a bit. So these are teal. These are one of my favorite. These are teal tiger's eye. So I'm just going to go in and cut those, put those to one side. Again, we'll stick with the six millimeter gauge. So what I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to wrap this is your one millimetre, so where's my six millimetre? There we go. So I'm just going to do a couple of links, not a chain, and you can just see how quickly this evolves. So what I'm going to show you is if you didn't want to have bead next to bead next to bead, you want a feature in between, I'm going to do a tiny little bit of chain mail. So let's quickly do, as I said, you can, and you can quickly see now how quickly this will take place. And this you will need your bail making pliers for that we mentioned in the introduction. I'm going to go in, pick up one of our, these are mesmerizing, the color on this, stunning. Go in, leave the gap. We're going to go in and do our little link. So that's the first one. do our second. Now I'm not linking these together because we're going to be doing a little motif in between. So again this is a completely different way of incorporating your rosary linking but separate in separating your linking. If that makes sense. We're going to go in do our second link. And you can see that why 0.6 millimeter is my favorite gauge. So it's thick enough to show off the coil and, and it's not very tough on the hands at all. So if you have dexterity issues or, or um, arthritis or anything like that, 0.6 is the go-to gauge. Okay, so we've got a couple of links for you there. So we're going to do a bit of chain mail. This is a very simple bit of chain mail and we're going to be making an item called a Mobius ring. So this is where we're going to use our step, our bail making pliers. And for this, you're going to need your one millimeter gauge wire. So we're going to click off a section again. Now, if you don't have these at home, um, you can use like a, a marker pen, for example, or a biro pen, anything, anything like that, but it will need to be round rather than hexagonally sided, which I know many of the, um, the ballpoint type pens are. So anything that's, that's round here, a lid, of a bottle, anything like that. But if you have the bail making pliers, it's absolutely perfect. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use the largest of the, um, the six steps. I'm going to take a piece of the one millimeter wire. Now I'm right-handed, so I hold the tool in my left. I'm going to place the wire over the large mandrel, holding it, which way shall I go? Let's go this way. So it'll be easier for you to see. So I'm gonna hold the wire in my left hand, I'm going to place the wire on the large mandrel, and then I'm simply going to wrap the wire around. You could probably get six or seven 
loops, okay? So that's wrapped all the way around our bale. We're gonna take that off. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to discard the two ends. So I'm going to take my pliers until the, the wires actually meet in that where the coil tightens. And I'm going to cut, and I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to do the same. So it's going to be there. So we've got our little coil. And then what I'm going to do using my pliers is I'm going to cut edge to edge, edge to edge. So you can see that you have your separate little jump rings. So that's four. So we've, we've made five and we need, we need three. So perfect. Okay, so they're your large. Now these are going to make the Mobius ring. And what I also want to do is make some smaller. Now, if you have, if you have jump rings in your stash pre-made, you won't have to do any of this, but it's nothing like making a piece of jewelry from scratch that you've made every component. So I think I'm going to use, let's go for, so one, two, three, four, the fourth largest. So it's still on the large side. Again, exactly the same. So place the wire across the gap, hold it in your left thumb, and then we're just going to wrap around our mandrel. Okay, slide that off. You can also use, if you want the smaller size, you can use something like a crochet hook, a larger crochet hook as well. So we're just going to cut the wire, at the, to cut these ends off. And then we're going to go in and we're going to cut our jump rings. And, and again, flush cutters are wonderful for making jump rings because you get a nice clear cut. So one, two, three, Let's do two at a time. Okay, so we've got our smaller jump rings and then we have our larger jump rings. So we'll do the Mobius ring first. Now, Mobius ring, you can do in any amount of, of um, number of rings. I tend to do them in groups of three or groups of five. So what we're going to do, we're going to use our flat nose pliers and we're going to close jump ring number one. So when, I'm, when I make my jump rings, you can see that we've got the open cut what I like to do if I'm closing my own jump rings is to close it. So I go past, pull it back so it meets. And then if you look at the, the, my flat nose pliers, these are from your tool kit. Can you see we've got the point of the plier and then we have this curve, this flat curve. What I tend to do is place my jump ring in the plier where that curve is. So I'm just going to go in where the curve is and just give it a squidge, just the, t just the outside edge. And what that does, it, it, it work hardens the cut slot and it's just, yeah, that stops any proneness for, for opening your design. So that's a nice, neat, closed jump ring. So we place jump ring number one flat on my mat. I'm going to take jump ring number two. I'm going to open it. Now, it's, we, we call it opening a door. So when you have a jump ring, whether you, you buy a ready-made jump ring or you make your own, is you never open east to west, you always open north to south or south to north. If you pull it in the other direction, it'll distort your jump ring and you'll never get it into a clear circle again. So I'm going to open north to south. Keeping that, that jump ring in my plier, I'm going to scoop down and pick up the second jump ring, the one that's already there in place. I'm going to scoop down and up. Again, I'm going to go in, I'm going to go past the cut, bring it back, go in and give it a squidge. And what we need to do then is place the two jump rings on top of each other on our mat. So you can already see the design starting to take place. Jump ring number three, we're going to open, leaving a large enough gap, about half a centimetre is more than enough. We're going to go down and scoop the other two jump rings. So down and scoop. Then we're going to close, go past, come back, so they meet, go in with a squidge, and then we're going to place all three jump rings on top of each other. So you get this little circle of, bee, of, of jump rings. Sometimes if I'm not happy with the way it sits, you can manipulate it, you can flip it over. So I think that's probably better. So that's your Mobius ring. Now we're going to attach it to our links that we've made a moment ago. 
I'm going to take one of the smaller jump rings that we've made. Again, we've made all of this from scratch. We're going to open the jump ring. I'm going to go scoop all three of our Mobius rings. So scoop all three. And I'm going to take my link that we've just made. And then we're going to close the jump ring. Now you can either use another pair of pliers to close your jump ring, but I've been doing this quite a while now, so I like, I like my thumb and finger involved in it as well. So it's going to go in, again, give that close a little squidge. So you can see now we've got that little Mobius ring attached to our link. Going to pick up our second smaller jump ring. Going to open it. We're going to scoop down so it picks up all three of our jump rings and our Mobius ring. Then we're going to go in, attach our second link. We're going to close it, come back, we're going to go in and squidge nice and tight. So there we have a beautiful link. So you can already see the difference here. So this is your basic rosary chain, and this is using one either side with your Mobius ring through the inside. And what you could do, which is really nice, is have a, is have a gemstone every 10 centimetres and have lots of these little Mobius ring sections in a row in between, just to make a, a little statement. Or you can just have one, or you can make them into earrings. You can do absolutely anything with this. But, but I just think the, the love for me is the fact that we've taken a humble reel of wire and we've turned it into something that you can wear. It's just, just, just lovely, absolutely love it. So that's your rosary chain. Check, this is your Mobius link, check. So next, I'm going to show you how to do your herringbone. So let's change colour once again. Let's go for, uh, we'll go for a pink one this time. Okay, so we've gone for pink. Now with your um, herringbone, what you need is the thickest gauge you can get through the whole of your gemstone. That's really important. So I'm going to stick with a one millimetre, like so. So I'm going for a one millimetre. And what we're going to do, we're going to make little sections and cut them off. So don't, don't be afraid of going for a longer section of wire. This will hold your gemstone, but for weaving, you will need 0.4 millimeter, of which we mentioned in the introduction. So I'm going to go for mixed metal. I'm going to go for a bit of silver. Now for each of the weaves, you will need, I would say about 18 inches of wire. So this is your 0.4 millimeter. And again, we're going to just go in and we're just going to warm it through in our fingers. Nice and soft. So again, it's, it's beautiful, this wire. You can see the shine on it as well. So, and the, uh, what I've done with these little demonstrations is I've not shown you completed pieces of jewellery. It's, it's the surprise of it forming before your eyes. I love that. So this is your one millimetre wire. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our piece of 0.4 and we're going to place it on top of our one millimetre. We want a tail of about an inch and then the remnants of the, of the wire coming out of the top. We're going to take the long section, we're going to take it underneath the one millimetre and back. So we've done one whole rotation. When we've done the rotation, can you see there's a little bit of an S on the wire? What we want to do is we want to take the two wires and just bring them up so they meet, so they're nice and close at the top. So you've got about an inch, inch and a half on a little tail and then the rest of your wire, which is going to do your weaving. So first thing is we're going to take our tiger's eye and we're going to place it on our one millimetre wire. And we need to slide it all the way down so it meets that little swirl that we've just added. Okay, and this, so we're going to do the herringbone now. So we're going to hold everything in my left hand nice and secure. And I'm going to take the long 0.4 millimetre wire and I'm going to wrap it over one side of the tiger's eye. Can you see? So I've gone over the side, keeping on top of the one millimetre wire. And then I'm going to take the one millimetre, what they're 0.4 millimetre, round the back of the one mil, bring it round to the front. Okay, so we're back on the top of the wire. So can you see now I've got a little surround around half of the gemstone. I'm going to take the wire, I'm going to flip it round 180 degrees, and I'm going to repeat, just get that little tail out of the way, okay? So take the long wire, go round your gemstone, 
always, always, always staying above on top of your one millimetre. If you go underneath, it'll unravel everything and it'll look like a crisscross, a bit of a mess. So just make sure you always stay and you repeat the pattern. So we've gone round the gemstone. And you can see now we're, we're going to go above that little knot that we've just made with the point for that. So we're going to go round, round the back, all the way over, back to the front. So now you can see we've got a piece of wire on the top and a piece of wire on the bottom. Going to turn 180 degrees, going to take our wire. This time, we're going to take our wire behind the first layer of wire that we've got. So can you see I'm just placing it behind, always staying on top of our one millimetre wire, over the top, round the back, back up to the front, 180 degrees. Going to take our form point four, round the back. It's always going to go around the back. Around the back of the point four that's already there, on top of the one millimeter, round the back to the front. Going to flip it round to the back of the four point four, on top of the one mil, round the back and up. And what we want is we want ten moves, five on each side. So if this is five, this is number six. So behind the point four group, staying on top of the one mil, round the back to the front, 180 degrees. This is number seven. So behind, on top, round the back and over, 180 degrees. Behind the group of three, so we've got four on this side now. Round the back to the front, final two. So one, round the back, on top, round the back, and over. And this is your last wire. So again, round the back, staying on top, round the back to the front. Because this is our last move, we're now going to take this wire round to the back. So now both wires are at the back. So I'm going to place that flat. Now you can always see, there's, there's the back. Can you see that the gemstone is embedded within the wires? and this is the front. So you can see that the webbing is on the top here. If you find that you've got gaps in your wires, just using your nails, just go in and give it a bit of a squidge, and then that will rectify that. So I'm just simply going to turn it over, and again, flush cut pliers. I'm going to go in, because both of the wires now are, are deeply embedded. So I'm going to go in, trim the short wire, and I'm going to cut off, make sure it's around the back, I'm going to cut off that long wire and then I'm going to go in and just give, give it a nice squidge and you should be able to run your finger over the top without having any scratchy ends and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the wire up to about a centimetre and it's really important that you do it this way and I'll show you why in a second. So the back of the bead is uppermost I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to bend the one millimetre a centimetre of wire away from me 90 degrees. So you can see we've, we've tilted it 90 degrees. And then I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to do a little loop. This is called an eye pin loop. And I'm going to do it in small moves. I'm just going to curl the wire back so it meets the top. Give it a nice little squidge. And you can see now that we have our loop at one end. And to this, we can add jump rings, we can attach our Mobius section if we wanted to, so combining lots of techniques. The reason why I said it's really important you do it this way, and I'll do it the wrong way just to show you the difference. So I've got the bead, the actual design uppermost, instead of the back uppermost. I'm going to cut a centimetre to do our loop. I'm going to take my pliers, I'm going to fold at a right angle away from me, 90 degrees. I'm going to curl the loop back so it sits in position. And now you can see that I've got the closure of the loop at the back of this bead, so you won't see that, but I've got the open section on the front of this, this end, so you will see that. Okay, so it's always important when you're making your end connectors is make sure you have the back of the herringbone uppermost fold away and then when you roll back, the back of the loop will be at the back of the bead and it will be hidden when you come to add your attachments. So that's your little herringbone section.
which again is, is beautiful. Absolutely love this little technique. And again, you can make lots of these in separate little sections. And then you can do rosary linking in between. As we mentioned, you can do your little Mobius sections in between. So it's absolutely perfect little technique. You can even pop a shepherd's hook on one end and make a little chain tassel to come off the bottom for earrings or, or a tassel on a necklace. So it's one of my favorite techniques of all time. And again, really simple, very therapeutic. Have a little practice, 10, 15 minutes. You'll be, you'll be really surprised how quickly you pick this one up. Now I've done 10 wires, I've done five wires each side, but you can, you can go on forever, depending on the length of four millimeter wire you, you use. You can get some really beautiful techniques. And again, you can do it in different sizes as well, but the whole technique is exactly the same, whatever shape bead you use. You can also do this in a rondelle as well, so you get a more elongated, it looks very much like a cat's eye if you use a rondelle through the center. Okay, so that's your herringbone. That's your rosary link and rosary chain. We have your rosary link and your Mobius ring chain mail. So the last quick demonstration I'm going to show you, again, is one of my favorites. Now, I'm not known for my wire working on, on the show. So whenever I get an opportunity to do a little bit of wire work, I thrive. I absolutely thrive. So now I'm going to show you how you cage your gemstones. And this is, this is really nice, really nice little technique. So what we're going to need for this, let's go for, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my gemstone box across and I'm going to go for, let's go for, I'm gonna go back to the green, I think. So this is, this is a 10 mil round in the green, okay? Now for this technique, for caging, you will need a ruler because we need to do a little bit of measuring. So I'll just move all this to one side. Okay, and there's a little rule of thumb. So once you've, um, you've seen the demonstration, Go back onto YouTube once it's finished and make a note of what I'm about to tell you now. And for this, you will need 0.8 millimeter wire. So I'm going to use my macrame ball. This is a small macrame ball because it has centimeter squares going down all the edges. Okay. So this is this is the this is the rule where there's my 0.8. There's my 0.8. So this is the rule as far as point of doing this um, caging technique goes. So this is a 10 millimeter round gemstone. So you need to cut nine centimeters of wire. Okay, so we'll just measure this up. So two, four, six, eight, nine, that's nine. So if you're using an 11 millimeter, 11 millimeter bead, you cut 10 meters of wire. If you're using a five mil bead, you cut four, mil, you know, four centimeters of wire. So whatever size the gemstone is in millimeters, you cut one less in number in centimeters of the wire. So 10 millimeter bead, you cut nine centimeters of wire. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our round nose pliers and we're going to find the central point of our piece of wire. So that's four and a half centimeters. So one, two, three, four and a half. We're going to place our pliers and we're just going to get that tiniest little kink. And this will just show us where the center of our wire is. Then we're going to go to one end. We're going to place our round nose pliers right at the very tip. And we're going to do the tiniest, tiniest of loops. Okay, so you can see now we've got a tiny little loop. Now using our flat nose pliers, we're going to do what's called, I call it a snail swirl, or it's, I think it's called a spiral. You're going to hold that loop in your pliers and you're going to do little movements and we're just going to start turning your wire. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do our, our little snail swirl. And what we need to do as we get nearer to that central point Keep going, keep going, okay, keep going, is we need to leave gaps in between the swirls. When we get near to the center, we're going to go to the other end and we need to do the, the swirl in the opposite direction. So it's going one way, we're going to take our wire the other way. Again, we've got our little loop. We're going to hold it in our pliers and we're going to wrap. And again, making sure you leave these little gaps. It's really important that you leave the gaps because this will form the caging on your bead. So I'm approaching the center. I'm going to flip it over, continue with the other side because you want them to meet 
in the centre. And again, make sure we've got those swirls nice and open. So you can see now we've got a very, very flash little S scroll. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take that little section, I'm going to hold it in my right hand, and where that middle intersection is, I'm going to fold into a right angle. So you've got a little, like a little clamshell sat there in your hand. I'm going to take my wire cage, I'm going to place it around the bead, and I'm going to manipulate the wires so they sit around the gemstone nice and neatly. And at this point, you can just go in with your nails and just manipulate the wires so you've got it nice and neatly. And then what we're going to do is we're using a piece of wire is we're going to find the drill hole. There it is. We're going to manipulate it all the way around so it meets our hole. So can you see I'm taking the wire through that first tiny little hole we made. It's going to feed through the gemstone and it's going to come up through the other side. There we go. Feed it through. And then at either end, you see now, you can do a simple eye pin loop if you wanted to, or a wrapped loop. And then you have your bead caging. So again, you can make lots and lots and lots of these and put them all together with, if we, with your Mobius ring sections, with your rosary link sections. And you can even incorporate, if you wanted to, your herringbone as well. So as well as the most important section, which was your calendar gift today, which is this amazing sterling silver bracelet, we've shown you how to do this, and then we've also shown you four different techniques, basic techniques of incorporating in your basic beginners to wire work. So very much hope you've enjoyed today's hour. There's only four days to go of the birthday celebration, so make sure you tune in tomorrow at seven for the next in the calendar prizes. Hello jewellery maker, John Scott here. Just wanted to wish you a very, very happy birthday. 13 years, my word. 13 years, you've not had me on enough, have you? I'll see you very soon. Have a fantastic 13 days. Happy birthday, jewellery maker. From the hobby maker team. Happy birthday, jewellery maker. 13 years of crafting your own gemstone jewellery. And I know this birthday celebration, there's even more exciting gemstones to come. Happy birthday.